Thank you very much for inviting me to give a talk here. My name is Ray. I'm from Uber AI. I'm leading a team doing uh, some artificial intelligence research and uh, applied work there. Uh, but today uh, we will not talk about uh, how important AI is to Uber. It's more about like uh, recently we have released a fascinating research that is uh, basically um, about the creativity and innovation uh, of uh, artificial intelligence. And I want to share with you about that. Um, so this is industrial 4.0 events. So we have to begin with these slides. So we talk about, uh, um, people are talking about that we are entering the era of industrial 4.0, right? So I think, um, uh, I think if we look back into the industry, all the previous industrial revolution is, uh, is powered by, I think, by innovations and, and, uh, and the creativity of, 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 of human. And the nest of innovations had powered these revolutions. And now we entered the new area, which people saying that the industrial 4.0 is about is around intelligence. Right? And uh, people think that uh, now we have more and more data from IoT device and all the connected systems. And now the artificial intelligence should become the new electricity. So it's really kind of the mag plays a magic power how we can really mine the data and get the useful information out of it. But my question would be like, is the recent, is the current status of artificial intelligence research or, or like all these buzzwords I've heard, are they really kind of creative, right? Are they really kind of have this enough in, in internal innovation power that will really kind of help us advance in, in this journey. So machine learning or AI is often perceived as a tool for solving given challenges. So this is a very famous uh, task called image classification, uh, where uh, in the past uh, in less than 10 years, as pe people have made great progress, they invented all kinds of algorithms, right? And actually um, eventually beat the human kind of performance on this uh, uh, image classification task. Uh, also, people heard about like uh, reinforcement learning, right? Deep reinforcement learning, where people are are kind of reviving these old ideas of of how to kind of uh, play a game, right? And uh, how to use neural network to control uh, control control and, and play a play a, 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 a this uh, famous uh, benchmark Atari games. And and of course, uh, some in, in the more advanced algorithm has been released uh, from DeepMind. Uh, we can, which we can now play in Go, and it's a, can, it's a very kind of Asian, but the Asian Chinese game, but it's kind of uh, complicated in that nature. And uh, so we now have algorithms and computer systems which can consistently beat the world best uh, human professional players. So it looks like they're, uh, AI really makes some progress. But I, what I want to point it out is, um, is machine learning and AI can really be creative, right? So pre the, the previous, you see image classification, you see Go. It's more like a given game. People invented them. People put this challenge in front of AI, and people invented algorithms to solve them. But the question is, can a machine learning AI be a little more creative, like in the human nature? Uh, by, cre by creative, I mean, uh, can machine invent diverse and interesting problems and solve them by themselves? So you inv they invent problems, and they solve them. And also, can they share and learn from those diverse experiences from, 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 from the learning? And eventually, could they bring their own curricular and teach themselves to make it really kind of intelligent? If we look back at some uh, AI research, you start to see that machine learning and AI does have some kind of creativity when generating new media or uh, designs. It's a famous example of uh, some, something called GAN, or Generative Adversarial Network, which invented in 2004, 2014. Um, so these pictures actually are generated by GAN. So those are not real pictures. That they are kind of gen computer-generated pictures. So see people, see like uh, the algorithm has made this much of them so that they generate really, really good, uh, they get really good results, right? And so do you know what, what will happen if your GAN can generate really, really, really good plots or, or figures? You can sell them. So this is a true kind of news that uh, uh, so-called AI-generated artwork kind of sells by half billion, half million dollars, which is uh, quite impressive. All right, but I do want to take a step back. Instead of look at the results that currently happens, I want to take a step back and look at 
uh, some kind of interesting computer science experiment has, uh, has been done in more than 10 years ago. Like there's a group of researchers who set up um, a kind of a web interface, right? And they kind of um, um, having, in the back end, they have this uh, a neural network which can um, self-evolving, it can, it can grow and, and modify itself. And this neural network actually can paint, um, do the paintings. Okay, they can kind of, you, you input at the X and Y location and it will give you the, the pixel intensity. So once you kind of query this, uh, all the X, Y's in a, in a 2D plot, you can get a, get a picture out of it, right? So they kind of having this neural network running backend and they kind of open this web interface. So a user can actually log into the, the web page and they start to interact with the computer. So the computer will generate a bunch of pictures and the, the people, the user, will pick one of those. They think it's the most, most interesting. And then the computer will kind of uh, go back and, and continue work on it, right? They, they're, the neural network that has penned this picture will evolve, will try to generate something even more interesting um, by this human. And then people can collaborate. So you think this picture is interesting, and then the next 10 pictures generated from that picture, then the other people will log in and pick what they, are, they feel interesting. So they have done this uh, interest, they have done this experiment, interactive experiment, and generated all kinds of pictures like this. And they call the service uh, Pick Builder, and they got all kinds of, um, I would say, um, kind of uh, somewhat realistic pictures from 10 years ago. So I think I found this is quite interesting. And if you look back the entire history, like how one final picture comes from the earlier picture, right? We, we know that all these pictures are evolved uh, from by, by, by human in the loop. So people actually look back and see how, how I actually get these pictures. And they actually find out that, oh, they actually come from, like, like the, 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 the final product is almost never resemble like all the, all the history of, of how we get that picture. So they find out all these stepping stones. Like for example, this uh, egg with a hat, which eventually becomes uh, a teapot, right? We have a, um, this G letter type of thing, become Jupiter. So um, people actually find out that you can, you, you, you get, the, the system actually find, the system of a people, uh, the human together with machine, actually finding things, right? Um, when you are not actually from looking, lo you are not looking for them from the beginning, but eventually you're finding them. So this is quite interesting. Like you, you, it, we will always kind of get used to kind of things that we set a target and we try to reach that target. But this kind of in interesting experiment tells us that you start with some objective, but sometimes you switch your goals and you get something even more interesting and it totally surprises you. So this is, uh, this is something called goal switching is actually not just uh, unique to that experiment. If you look at back to the human innovation, the history of human, actually it's kind of key for science and technology innovation, right? For example, um, if you are, if you are trying to come up a good way of heating your food, right, can, can use a fire, but uh, eventually you went to microwave, but you know that the microwave was not, was not actually for heating your food. It's actually starting for, for a completely different reason. Also the same story applies to compute and eventually the, um, the new energy, right? The, the nuclear energy was a new energy form, but it's not actually in uh, original design for people to um, get, get new energy resource. So I think this tells us that looks like in history, the only way to solve hard problems is by creating problems while you're solving them and go switching between them. So you don't have a specific goal there, but you kind of um, create problems, local problems, and you solve them, and you gradually expand your scope, and eventually you will reach some very interesting and surprising state. So we kind of um, want to learn from that kind of process, how human do innovation, right? How human do innovation? And we kind of try to, try to combine the power of counter AI, which is have very good at finding solutions if you give them a challenge, okay, and give them enough data, of course. And then we also want to say, can we make AI can create this new challenge or new design? I will combine these powers to make it this into an open-ended loop. So you, have, you start to have a simple challenge, your AI system come up a solution, and then the, the system will come up a, a, a challenge, which is a little bit harder than that, and then come up another solution. So the kind of loop, loop are going on, 
and, and we call it open-ended because we never set a final, final goal there. We just let it go and see how it will happen. So that's why it's called open-ended. There's actually already an open-ended algorithm running, okay? And it's actually, it's called natural evolution. It created us and our, our intelligence, right? And over the past billion years, it's starting from a very humble, like a single cell kind of uh, thing, and then grow, grow like ex exploding to this uh, enormous form of life, and it created us and our, 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 our intelligence. So our hope is, um, if we could, okay, come up something, uh, some some algorithms which are truly open-ended, and and we throw a lot of compute into it, what will what what it will give us, right? Could it give us uh, 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 endless uh, creativity, like like a machine with endless c uh, creativity that will help us design or or finding new interesting things? Will it? Uh, uh, give us a uh, human level or, or kind of more powerful or better AI system, it's all possible, right? We, we, we start to think about this problem and we want to design a system that can do, that can prototype that, 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 that type of idea. I can skip this slide. We, have, we do have some, we, we do have published some web page on that. Um, so the question is like why Uber cares about open-endedness, right? Why want to do this? On the other, on one hand, we, we do have a research lab who are doing fundamental research. So we are doing, we do kind of want to eventually solve or help contribute to the solve of artificial general intelligence. So people are, um, like, like David Silver from DeepMind, he is he, the inventor of the, all these uh, AlphaGo and uh, Atari game you know, solving using uh, deep reinforcement learning. So he, he used to say, um, AI or eventually AI should come from uh, reinforcement learning plus deep learning, right? But as I said, this, is, this will not give you the AI because uh, again, you always offer the problem. You offer, offers, offers a challenge and AI is just a problem solver, right? Problem solver is good, but it won't give you the human level. You won't even get close to the human level intelligence. But we think that at least we should bring open-endedness into that picture. So we let the AI system create its own challenges and solving them. And we can, we can keep pushing the boundary of the problem a uh, AI system can solve. And eventually, maybe we will reach um, some better AI system. I, I, I won't say it's human level, but it's like, should be like stronger than just um, set a target and, and solve it, right? And also, we think that there are some practical reasons why I want to study openness at um, uh, at, at, at Uber, because we think that the creativity of open-endedness can help us solving practical problems, right? So for example, um, can we like use that to create the problem and solutions, right? To identify some corner cases for safety, safety applications. Also, um, later you will see that we have a prototype to show that um, we, 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 we will be able to solve difficult problems that can only be solved by open-endedness uh, algorithm. But if you pick one of the problems that the open-endedness algorithm solved, invented and solved, and you directly try to solve it, you can't solve it, okay? So we will show that. So um, we have released some uh, algorithms called the Poet, and um, uh, it has been covered by science and printed, presented at, at academic conferences and, and industrial events, and we, have, we win, some good, win some reward, which are very happy. All right, so um, let's, uh, this is like one slide telling you uh, what is the algorithm actually about, right? So I'm talking about problems and the solutions, right? Here we put it in a more kind of reinforcement learning of, or type of uh, context. So our problems is, is the environment. In this case, it could be like, uh, 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 like uh, uh, on an obstacle course, right? And your, your, your solution will be an agent which are aimed to navigate in this obstacle course, okay? So you have problems, solutions, uh, here we call it environment and an and, and agent. So the, all the, 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 the openness algorithm called POET is actually all about grow and maintain a population of a paired environment and agents. So we paired a problem with, with a solution, right? And we start with a simple problem. We hope we can come up with a solution for that. And they, they are paired together. And now the next step is we evolve the the environment, we evolve the problem into diversity and complexity, 
Okay. In the meantime, every time we got a new problem, we paired with the solution and we optimize the agent or optimize the solution, try to solve that challenge, solve that environment. And, and we hope that we, we, we also kind of try to utilize, create, preserve, and utilize the stepping stones we, we talked about before. So we think that these three kind of uh, um, components forms this, this algorithm, which will give us some, um, uh, something interesting. So here's a prototype that we have built. So um, it is like a 2D obstacle course, and we have this uh, 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 agent, which is a bipedal, sim very simple bipedal uh, um, robot, which, can, which, which is only goal is try to walk from left to right, navigate through this in kind of a very challenging landscape, kind of reach the right, right? And uh, um, so, as you can imagine, we start from very easy. We have a flat ground. This uh, agent, well, as soon as it learns to stand up and, and move, it will kind of solve the problem. So we start with something very easy. And now we make the environment become a little bit more harder every time. So as you can see, starting from flat ground, we, we, we can add a little bit of um, complexity. We can add a little bit roughness. We can add some gap, add some stump, right? And then. Uh, the agent will, uh, we will see, like the, um, we will can come up with a new solution for the, for the new challenge, starting from simple. So how we're actually doing it is, it's probably not important. We, uh, uh, what we are doing here is actually we, uh, starting from the existing problems, right? We let each problem generate a new problem, which are slightly, they might be slightly easier or might be slightly harder than their parent task, right? And then we uh, filter them by, by difficulty. So we don't want something that is too difficult or too easy. Okay, we just uh, we, 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 we filter them by, by their difficulty um, as uh, to the, the current capability of, of the agent, right? And, and also we rank them by novelty. Here novelty is, a, is, a, is a more like a mathematical concept, but, but it's all about like we want our new task that add to our system being very different. Okay, as different as possible than the existing task, right? We, we are aiming for diversity here, and we think that will help us. And uh, finally, we will, we will find the ones that are not too difficult, not too hard, and that is very, it's, it's the top one that are very different uh, from the rest of the task, and then we add that to the system, and, and we, we initialize the agent and try to solve it. So, so it's more like, um, um, so it's more like you have a lot of parallel, u parallel universe, and each universe you have an agent inside it, right? And they are, their goal is try to solve solving, solving their task, okay? And occasionally they talk to each other. We will, we, we, we will talk about that. But if you start a system, you will start to see that um, now you can have some kind of solution for easy environment, right? The, this agent now is um, be able to navigate in this. Uh, a little bit harder environment and find a solution. And they are, they seems like uh, have a diverse skill set now has been developed from the system. So all these problems are optimized in parallel. Okay, so we talk about like uh, they, they're, these agents talk to each other, how they talk to each other. It's actually very simple, right? We have seen the stepping stone ideas, right? Um, so um, it's all about goal switching. So it's actually it's very simple. Occasionally, okay, occasionally we just took uh, one of the agent and move into another environment. It's like you are doing the test in this room, right? And occasionally we move a clone of you into another room and to see if you are doing better there, okay? If you are doing better job than the, the existing people there, that guy being replaced by a clone of you, okay? So it's like we, we were doing this by ensure that the, the local innovation in, in one of the experiment could propagate into another room or, or, or another challenges, right? So that we, we maintain like a good level of, of um, uh, our a good level of like kind of unified um, agent, agent, agent capability. And uh, this seems quite important. So in this case, all agent being, being replaced. Okay, so it's a total overview here for the, for the entire algorithm starting from, start from easy, easy problems. We have a solution, we create a, a medium level problems. We kind of transfer from, from transfer the, the, the solution there and 
after a few optimization, it seems working. We, we invent a problem that's too hard, we, we reject that. We intermediate hard problem, we add another solution, and then now this entire thing is going parallel, right? So we could, uh, uh, we, we could have an older kind of task, can continue innovating uh, new, new problems, and we have a, another transfer between this median task that eventually the hard medium, another medium hard task, and eventually create, we, we, we will be able to kind of solve a very hard problem. And then later on, you see that transfer happens. And now, on um, challenges has been, a very hard challenge has, has been solved. So this entire system, if you look, if you look at the very last one, the E6 with the A6, right? If you see that, that agent, that A6 agent actually comes from, right? Um, from like the, uh, 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 from the from a from history of agents, so so this actual agent has been experienced in a lot of tasks, and eventually a clone of it land and solved the very hard one. So we think that this entire parallel exploration and creating new tasks and solving them and letting them transfer to each other actually created a implicit curriculum for the agent, right? And it it actually will be able to. Uh, this is a reason that fundamentally solves. The, 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 the task, the, uh, the, the hard task. Um, okay. Also, I, I want to point out like an interesting f phenomenon here. Like, um, so we start with the fat ground. So the agent are agent on the, uh, on the, on the flat ground quickly learns to uh, work in it, right? But it's, uh, but somehow it's never got the chance to stand up. So this is not a very efficient way of working. It has his knees on the ground and it lost out of lost out of energy because of the friction. So it's actually um, kind of stuck with that because to to just to that specific task, it is already a good enough strategy. So it's called local local optimum there, right? So then we kind of create a new task, add a little bit of stump to it, right? And now you see that. And, and we transfer the, the, the agent from, from the flat ground to the little bit stumpy kind of environment. Now the agent can no longer walk that way because, because of the stump, he can no longer put his knees on the ground. He has to stand up. So we let that agent in that stumpy environment for a while, he eventually learns to stand up, right? And that is a, that is a necessary uh, 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 um, gate he needs to navigate in a stumpy environment. And interesting, it actually goes back. Okay, because we, we periodically check if someone else does better you, than you in your challenges. So somehow, this uh, new way of working is better, even back to the flat environment. So the system find out that and move the agent, move a column of the, of the new agent back to the old environment. And that is actually a more efficient way of working. You see the score actually bump up a little bit. And then, the agent continue to work on to kind of optimize that environment and eventually get a very good score. So now you see the, the final, uh, final agent in that flat environment actually have a, a, a more energy efficient way of working. On the other hand, if you let the parent agent, if you don't have this, right? You just let the guy in the flat ground continue to optimize it. He will stuck in that local minimum and he will never learn to stand up. So we we'll actually see this. All right, so by having all these components all together, we start to see that the agent can be able to navigate through some, 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 some very big challenges. We have a higher stump, very rough space, and very large, large gap. And, okay, a, a quick question here is, okay, can we uh, say we, we create some challenges, right, at later stage of this algorithm? And people might ask, oh, if you pick those challenges, you think that is challenge, right? And then, can you just set that as a goal and just uh, put the agent there and try to solve it using whatever reinforcement algorithm starting from scratch? So throw away all your system. Just pick whatever problem your system created and then solve it directly. Can this be solved? The answer is no. If you look at here, you actually see that for the, for the, 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 the counter reinforcement algorithm is very good at finding this local minimum, right? Because he, he don't want to fall down into the, into the well or, or kind of, uh, um, that will give him a big, big penalty at, or terminate that, 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 that game. So he learns to stand in front of the, 
uh, the, the major, major challenges instead of kind of trying to cross over. Um, we also have like uh, more comparison in our paper, but, but here we, we just want to emphasize again that because of we have this uh, diverse and, and, and kind of increasingly expanding um, cracker that are implicitly created by our algorithm, um, we, we can eventually solve those, those challenges, right? And, but if you pick one of those and try to directly solve it, you, you, you can't do that with the current algorithm. And finally, um, we, can, we start to see uh, this agent uh, solving a even kind of mixed type of, of environment, which will large, mix with large scamp, uh, various height of uh, stump, and, 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 and roughness. And, it, and if you look at each of the agents, they actually developed a, a more human-like way of walking or, or navigating through this landscape and they can become very um, uh, interesting uh, way of, of doing things, uh, of navigating. Okay, so here's my favorite. So we have uh, the system eventually start to adding stairs, and then they created this uh, seamless impossible challenge invented by, uh, by, the, by the system, right? It's like a very high stairs, but will it solve it? Yes, it can solve it. So it's come up this way of, uh, uh, it's like a Kung Fu master. He learns how to kind of use, use the, gravi uh, the gravity to kind of go down and use it and, you know, in, in the most energy efficient way. All right, to quickly wrap up, um, we think that uh, the open endedness algorithm is aimed to uh, unlocking the endedness creativity um, of machine learning and AI. Um, so we, we kind of released this algorithm called Poet, uh, which is paired open ended trailblazer. We think that is a step, probably a humble step, towards to truly open this algorithms. We kind of demo showing that the, in, in that limited setup, we can create problems and solutions that are increasingly in, increasing challenge and diversity over the time. And we eventually create problems that cannot be solved by direct, directly uh, um, optimized in, in those final challenging environment. But those ones can only be solved using Poet. Um, and, uh, uh, finally, I think our, our algorithm will are likely to, to uh, need a lot of computation because we are actually explore like not a single optimizing problem. We are doing like a, a, a mesh of or a grid of computational problem on or optimization problem, and we kind of let agent transfer to each other. So, so it is kind of computationally intensive. Um, just to. Uh, show some next step and challenges ahead, right? We, we could go from 2D to 3D, which we are currently already doing. When you, when you go to 3D, things become immediately more interesting. So now instead of just jump over an obstacle, you could kind of go around it, right? And then we, we, we can have like an agent which can actually not just replace each other, they can interact with each other, right? We can, we can initialize with a big, big room and we can put tons of agents inside it and let them interact with each other together with the uh, evolved environment. And finally, for more practical uses, we are, we, are, we are currently looking to connecting this algorithm to a simulator that can simulate autonomous driving, right? So we could create really create edge cases or corner cases that, and find a solution of it for, 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 for our um, uh, autonomous driving program. And uh, uh, how to use it in a, in, 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 in the Uber setup, like it's, it's in, in, in a more kind of a ride sharing setup is also very interesting, right? Because, because for that case, so we don't have a simulator anymore, right? So how, how can we um, create new challenges in that sense? It's kind of uh, our answer, but, but it's good to, but I think it's interesting to, to think about it. I'm happy to chat with you later on this. All right, so uh, we have open source to this uh, code and you can free to um, play with it and break it and see, see how things are, are working on your, on your side. Um, and uh, uh, the, 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 the last thing that I want to mention that is, uh, we, we talk about that, y if you still remember that, that uh, computer science uh, experiment done in 10 years ago, right? Where we say a neural network can paint a picture and then people can vote their best picture and neural network can continue to work on it. Right, so a natural next step would be, instead of a way kind of hand design is uh, oh, every time add a little bit of stump, every time add a little bit of gap, right? We could let a neural network, right, paint this thing for me, and it lets, uh, we optimize the agent while we evolve the neural network who are painting this, this environment. And that will give us enormous more diversity. So we are no longer, um, we, we will no longer be limited to the finite 
type of obstacle. But whatever obstacle that the agent at well, the, the, the neural network will, will invent along with optimizing the agent. So we already have some work, work done in that um, direction, and we, we, we are happy to, we'll be happy to share with you once we are more ready. All right, that's all about it. I think, thank you so much, and it's a great pleasure to, uh, to, to uh, talk with you. Thank you, any questions? Thanks. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.